Thank you very much. I'm very pleased to be here, particularly since the last time I was supposed to come to New York, Hurricane Sandy decided that I couldn't. So I'm very, very pleased to be here. Now, I was working on this talk last night in my rather jet-lagged state, so I hope it still makes sense this morning to find out. I called this one, Dad, where do novels come from? <laughs> Even though that's not, in fact, a question I've ever been asked by my two boys who are 9 and 11. I mean, if, if they did ask me, I would probably be tempted to embark upon an explanation along the lines of, well, when an author and an idea love each other very much, <laughs> then nine months later, but this would lead to the scorn of my children. And my dad joke, I think, is universally reviled wherever you go. And also, living as they do with an author and a publisher, and my wife is, my wife Anna is one of the children's publishers at Ellen and Ullman back home in Australia, and I hope they, they have an idea of the real process anyway. Though it's true that my oldest son, when he was very little, used to think that Anna's job was cutting the page proofs down to the bookstore. <laughs> she'd bring page proofs home and show him and say, this is a book I'm working on, and then she'd bring the book. And one day he said, oh, so you cut along those lines. <laughs> I and mean, if only publishing was as simple as cutting along the trim marks. So, Dad, where do novels come from is a rhetorical question. I, I should just drop the Dad part. It's really me asking where novels come from, and of course, me answering the question, or, or me attempting to answer my own question. You, you think by now, I've been in this business a long time, I would have learned not to ask myself a question that I'm not sure I can answer. <laughs> Clearly, I haven't. But here we go. Where do novels come from? Out of author's head. There we go. That's the answer. <laughs> but is it a complete answer? No, it's not. There's a lot more to it than that. Mainly because to get a book out of an author's head, a number of things have to go in there first. I mean, it's a fairly common belief that books come out of a single moment of inspiration, and all the rest is simply writing it down. Kind of like taking dictation from an internal muse, you know, in between naps and cups of coffee and obsessively checking your Amazon ratings. <laughs> but this isn't true, because an idea on its own is not a novel. An idea is just the beginning, it's a, a faint sketch of a construction, it's not even a blueprint. And the book has to be built out of something. So what is a novel built out of? What do you make a novel from? <coughs> Here I go again, I'm asking myself questions. Luckily, I think I know the answer to this one. What is the raw material of a novel? And the raw material of a novel is actually experience. Or as I prefer to call it, using the accepted technical term, stuff that goes into an author's head. Now, there's two main categories of experience. I think it's important to, to look at each of them, particularly for authors, because in many ways, the second kind of experience is actually more important. Though many non-writers or beginning writers don't understand that. That's because the first category is direct personal experience. It's the actual life you lead. Everything you've done yourself, you've lived through, this is commonly thought of as what you know. And it forms the basis of that old advice to beginning writers, that old and dangerous advice to beginning writers, to write what you know, which has led to so many would-be writers becoming lumberjacks, deep sea divers, short-order books, knife throwers, snake charmers. It's also particularly troubling beginning fantasy authors because of course they can't go and talk to a dragon, they can't practice sorcery or raise baby griffins, and sensibly they usually don't want to catch bubonic play to see what it's like. <laughs> and it's troubling for young writers too because all they really all they think they know is home and school life. And they often don't want to write about that. They think they can't write about anything else until they become a lumberjack, super charmer, etc. But in actual fact this direct personal experience provides the essential basic building blocks for writing a novel. It's the feelings and observations of simply being alive. Now, what's it like to breathe fresh air, to plunge into the sea, to fall off a shed roof, to climb a hill, to argue with your parents, to love and be loved, to be broken hearted, or so happy you can't stop laughing, to walk to the shop and buy a carton of milk, to go around the world in a tramp steamer, trip over and stub your toe, to be seriously injured in a car accident, to get a job, to not get a job, to eat something delicious, to spit out something revolting. A big and little, mundane and exceptional, personal experience is all raw material for the writer. 
From these basic building blocks of your own life, you can extrapolate, you can take things you've seen and felt and done, you can ratchet them up or down, and you can transform them as required. Now the second category of experience, the second category of this raw material, is often discounted to some degree by non-writers, because it's not direct personal experience. They often think it's less valuable, less important. But actually it's immensely valuable to a writer. What I'm talking about is vicarious experience. Things that the author has had at second hand, filtered, organised, reduced or amplified, read and watched and heard, movies, plays, documentaries, chat shows, musicals, concerts. And of course, and most important of all for a writer, books. Everything you read or watch or listen to is also what you know, which is good for fantasy writers, given the paucity of dragons in real life. It's all raw material. And the other important aspect of vicarious experience is that while you're reliving the experiences that have been transmitted to you, you're also learning how it's done. You're learning how to do that transfer of experience simply by, by, by participating, by watching and listening and reading. And to a large degree, writers learn to write by reading. Every novel you read not only adds to your various experiences, it also helps teach you how to work that transfer from mind to mind. So all this stuff is in an author's head. What you know is an immense reservoir of raw material that hopefully you're adding to all the time. And an author can take that raw material things they did themselves and things they've taken on second hand and can break them down into tiny component pieces and put them back together to create new experiences that not only didn't happen to the author, but haven't happened, or in fact couldn't happen in our real world. But if you build a novel up with all the right small pieces of real, vicarious and imagined experiences, it will feel real to the reader.